G'day guys and welcome to our lesson on alternating current and direct current. The main difference between alternating current and direct current is that in alternating current you get either yes you get both positive and negative voltages. In direct current you only get either positive or negative voltages. You don't get them together. So if I were to sketch a quick example of direct current, that is a direct current there that is a direct current there, that is a direct current, and that is a direct current, but this is an alternating current because I'm getting both positive and negative voltages here, assuming this is a graph of voltage over time. If I were to sketch the voltage coming out of a battery, it's constant over time like that, and the current, if we look at, uh, whose law is this? Ohm's law. If I get I by itself here, I equals V on R, you can see that there's a direct relationship between the voltage and the current here. There we go. The power coming out of the wall in your house though is a little different. It doesn't look like that at all. It tends to follow a sinusoidal wave. So something like that. And Ohm's law still applies, V equals IR. So you expect the current to look similar. Notice I haven't drawn a scale in here because unless R is equal to 1 ohm, these will not be at the same height there. So sketching, first of all, the power com that comes out of our wall. It has a peak value of 340 volts and a minimum value of negative 340 volts, ignoring the current for now. So V peak here is equal to the height of that peak there, 340 volts. We also have the second concept, V peak to peak. And the naming here hints at what this is, it's the magnitude of the difference between the top peak and the bottom peak. And that would be here, 340 times 2, or 680. So V peak to peak equals 2 times V peak. And the third concept I want to introduce, which is the most important one here. We drew those direct current graphs before, straight lines, two straight lines there. Power equals the voltage multiplied by the current, P equals VI. If the voltage and the current are constant, the power is constant. But when we look at this AC graph here, and these formula all relate to AC graphs, the voltage, oops, redo, the voltage is not constant, and the current is not constant. So you expect, say, here to be getting zero power, and here to be getting a heap of power, and then here to be getting zero power again, zero times zero. So we have this concept, V, RMS, and RMS stands for root mean squared. And the VRMS for this signal here is the V peak, divided by root 2, so that's 340 divided by root 2, which comes out around about equal to 240 volts. And what that's telling us is that this AC electrical signal with a peak of 340 and a minimum of negative 340 is equivalent to a DC signal of 240 volts. And the reason it's equivalent is 
Here we have positive voltage and here we have negative voltage. Both contribute to the root mean squared voltage. If I were to square both uh, this entire graph, I believe it would look something like, it would go very high, it would look like that. And the negatives would become positive. If I were to find the average value of that graph, and then take the square root of it, I would have the root mean squared value. And that is what I like to call the effective voltage. So even though the voltage is varying between 340 and negative 340, it acts, say in a light globe, sort of as though it were at a constant 240 volts. So now we've talked about the peak voltage, the peak to peak voltage, and the voltage RMS, recognize that the current follows the same rules. We'd have the peak current here, we'd have the peak to peak current here, and there is a root mean squared current somewhere there. The graphs are aligned. So when, say at this point in time here, the power at this point in time is given by the peak voltage multiplied by the peak current. And this point here, both the voltage and the current are zero. So the power at some points in an AC supplied system will be zero. Let's look at a practice question that deals with this kind of thing. I'll scale this down. Okay, here we go. There's a heater. and it's being run off the AC power coming out of your wall, which has a V peak of 340 volts, and the heater runs at 160 watts. Let's figure out a few things. First of all, what is the peak Oh, actually, what is the RMS voltage? So that would be 340 divided by root 2, or 240 volts. This we knew from this question up here. What is the V peak to peak? Well, that would be 340 multiplied by 2, or 680 volts. What is the I? RMS. Well, if the heater is running at 160 watts, that indicates the average power is 160 watts. And the average power is given by VRMS, the effective voltage, multiplied by IRMS, the effective current. So IRMS is equal to P average over VRMS, which is equal to 160 over 240 or 0.67 amps. Let's figure out now the peak current. So we figured out the RMS current there. But now let's figure out the peak current. So I peak must be I RMS times root 2. That's 0.67 times root 2 and I have that coming to around 0.94. Let's find the minimum power. Well, the minimum power would occur when both voltage and therefore current is zero. So the minimum power is zero, and the maximum power occurs when you have V peak here and I peak here. So 340 times 0.94, comes to about 320. And we'll end on that final revelation. The power the heater is running at is 160, and the peak power the heater can run at is 320. So power peak, in fact, is equal to power average times two when you're dealing with AC electrical signals.